Hello and welcome to this video tutorial where we will look at how to format the last X number of rows automatically. Now this is a question I was asked in my YouTube comments recently and I thought it made an interesting question to become a video. Now the number of rows that we're going to format is specified by a value in a cell. And you can see it right now in cell E3, currently set to six, but we need to be able to change that. And we want to format the entire row. Now my data is only columns A and B, two columns, but this could be more or less columns than that. So you can see in my data, I also have 22 rows. And for this to work, there's a couple of things we need to know. Firstly, we need to know how many rows there are. So there are currently 22, but if this list is to grow or shrink in size, we need to be able to detect how many there are. And then we need to know a cell's row number so that we can test that it is less than or equals the total number of rows, 22 in this case, but also greater than the total number of rows minus the value in cell E3. Now I'm going to write the formula in a cell so that we can see what's going on. And then once we know it's working, I'm going to copy and paste it into a conditional formatting rule. So I'm going to click in cell C2 and just widen that column for a moment. And let's put this together. So we need the AND function because we are going to test if it's less than or equals the total number of rows and also a second condition greater than the total number minus six in this case. Now the first logical test is to test if the row number, so I'm using a function called row of this current cell, let's go for A2, doesn't really matter what column we target, close bracket, is less than or equal to the total number of rows. So I'm going to use the count A function to count the entire column A. Now there's no blanks in that column and that's important for this approach to work. Close bracket. So there's our first test. Is it less than or equal to total number of rows? Comma brings us on to logical two. I know that because it tells me in the argument list underneath my formula. And I want to know if the row of the current cell is greater than the total number of rows on column A minus six. Oh, sorry, not minus six, minus the value in cell E3. And I will need to make sure that that is absolute. So I'll press F4, close off the AND function. And if I press enter, that is false. But if I copy that to the bottom, the last six are true. And if I go and change the value in cell E3 to eight, now the last eight are true. And if I change it to two, the last two are true. So I've written a conditional formula to test the row numbers against the criteria I'm interested in. And if you're after something else, you can just tweak what I've done here. For us though, it's a case of going into that first cell and copying that formula which works, then I'm going to select the values I want to format. Now I'm formatting both columns, the whole row, but I'm going to go a little bit further than what I've got here. Let me select down to row 50. Now I don't really want to select the whole columns that I could do, because that's going to be every single row of the sheet, which may be a little bit excessive, especially if you're dealing with a big spreadsheet but I do want to go a little bit beyond my range for that dynamic nature. Conditional formatting on home, new rule, use a formula to determine the cells to format, and I'll paste it in the box. Now one little change to the formula we have, we need a couple of dollar signs. Where we have the row function, I need a dollar sign before the column because I've selected two columns and multiple rows. I need that column to be fixed, stay on column A, but a relative over the rows. So a mixed reference there, and if I just scroll over to the left, because I need a dollar sign 
before the other A as well. I can then choose my formatting. Let's go for a nice green and a bold font. And if I OK my way out, I have the last two. Let me get rid of this column. And if I change that to, to a six, I'll get the last six. If I change to a nine, I'll get the last nine. And now I have this dynamic formatting of the last X number of rows. I hope you found that video useful. Please check out some of my other videos on this YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.